In this video, we'll be talking about the elastic curve. So what is an elastic curve? Let me try and show you what these examples here. Before load P is applied to the beam, the beam is straight and the center line looks like this. In case you don't already know, the center line is simply an imaginary line that runs through the center of the beam along its longitudinal axis. Now, if you apply load P, the beam would experience the following deformation. It's important to keep in mind that these deformations are heavily exaggerated. Now notice how the center line bends along with the beam. This curved line actually represents the elastic curve. For cases like these, drawing the elastic curve is pretty straightforward and obvious. But when we're dealing with more challenging cases, we would have to utilize the bending moment diagram. Regardless of the situation, there are generally two effects you have to consider when we draw the elastic curve. The first is the applied loading, and the second is the support conditions. On the following slide, I'll show you an example of how we'd apply the moment diagram. On this slide, I'll show you how we'd apply the moment diagram to draw the elastic curve. Before I go over the example on the right, I want to talk about the positive and negative sign convention for the internal moments. A positive internal moment tends to bend the beam in the upwards direction, while a negative internal moment tends to bend the beam downwards. Now we'll move on to the moment diagram. We can obtain the moment diagram by simply finding the area under the shear diagram. Due to the lack of space, I won't be able to draw the shear diagram, but for now we'll assume it's already known. And here is the corresponding elastic curve. So how do we go from the moment diagram to the elastic curve? The first thing we'll have to do is look at the beam supports. This particular beam has a fixed and older support at points B and D respectfully, so that means the vertical displacement at these points is zero. In the following section, I'll go into more detail regarding how different supports impact the elastic curve, but for now this is all we'll need to know. Now let's take a closer look at the moment diagram. The negative region of the moment is an indication that the elastic curve is concave down between points A and C. Likewise, the elastic curve is concave up within the positive region between points C and D. You may not realize this, but point C actually represents the inflection point. This can be determined through the use of the moment diagram. It's the point at which the curve changes from concave up to concave down. Now let's look at points A and E. The deflection at these points are delta A and delta E respectfully. Depending on the magnitude of P1 and P2, the deflection at one of these points may represent the beam's maximum deflection. So you might be asking yourself, how do we solve for the deflection or the slope of the elastic curve? In order to answer that question, we'll first need to learn about the moment curvature relationship, and that's what we'll be talking about on the following slide. On this slide, we'll be talking about the moment curvature relationship. To be more specific, I want to talk about the relationship between the internal moment and the radius of curvature rho for the elastic curve. I'll be using this diagram to derive this relationship. All right, so we'll take this beam and remove a small element. This element will be located at a distance of x from the left support. And here's a close-up of the element we just removed. So dx and ds represents incremental lengths along the length of the beam. And y represents the vertical distance between these two lengths. As you can tell, before the beam is deformed, ds equals dx. Now, if you apply an internal moment to both sides of the element, the following deformation would occur. Due to this deformation, the top length is being compressed, and so dx is now longer than ds. The top compressed length has been labeled as ds prime. It's important to note that dx remains the same. This is simply because the length is located in the middle of the beam, and so the length is neither stretched nor compressed. This variable rho represents the radius of curvature. It occurs as a result of the deformation and it occurs from point O up until dx. And d theta simply represents the incremental angle that occurs as a result of the deformation. On the following slide, I'll use this diagram to derive the moment curvature relationship. On this slide, we'll begin deriving the moment curvature relationship. So from similar triangles, we can develop the following equation. Now, if we isolate for dx minus ds prime, we'll end up with the following equation. We will label this equation as equation 1. Now we'll need to use a strain equation at y. The equation is simply the change in length over the original length. 
If we plug in the corresponding variables, we'll end up with the following equation. Now, if we isolate for dx minus ds prime, we'll obtain equation 2. Now, if we equate equations 1 and 2, we'll end up with the following equation. Now, we'll simplify the equation by canceling out dx and isolating for 1 over rho. And we'll label this equation as equation 3. We'll use equation 3 and continue deriving the relationship on the following slide. On this slide, we'll continue to derive the moment curvature relationship. Alright, so I've included equation 3 from the previous slide on the corner of the page. We'll be needing the equation near the end of the derivation. Alright, so from previous units, we already know about the Hooke's Law and the Flexure Formula. To obtain the relationship, we'll have to use these two equations. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is take the Hooke's Law and isolate for epsilon. We'll call this equation 4. And after that, we'll substitute the flexure formula into equation 4. We'll call the resulting equation equation 5. Now we'll substitute equation 5 into equation 3. And so we'll end up with the following equation. Notice how the negative signs cancel each other out. Now, if we simplify the equation even further, we'll end up with this equation here. And this equation represents the moment curvature relationship. On the following slide, I'll go into more detail regarding what each variable represents. On this slide, I've explained what each variable represents. I'll let you pause and read through each point on your own, but keep this in mind. The sign for rho depends on the direction of the moment. For instance, let's look at figure 6. When the moment is positive, rho extends above the beam, and so the sign is positive. However, when the moment is negative, rho extends below the beam, and so the sign is negative. Now this concludes the video regarding the elastic curve. In this video, I provided an introduction to what an elastic curve is, and we also derived the moment curvature relationship. In the following video, I'll begin talking about the approach required to solve for the slope and displacement at any point on the elastic curve.